guys, this is Moni from PTE Magic. It's been a long time and today I'm back with another interesting experiment on PTE. As you know, I've done many different videos on speaking, on listening and even on reading. However, I have not shown you much of writing which is why today we're going to have a look at the writing section. Before we continue with the video, if you want to see more videos on PTE tips and tricks, then don't forget to click the subscribe button below. So the video today is not going to be your typical writing tutorials. But it's going to reveal to you some secrets of PTE writing. Normally in other English tests like uh, IELTS, to get a high score in writing, you will need to do really well in essay writing. My question is, To answer this question, I actually attempted a mock test on btepractice.com, mock test A, and uh, what I did was uh, I skipped two essays. I did uh, only summary written text, I did uh, reading, fill in the blanks, reading and writing, I did um, listening, summary spoken text, um, fill in the blanks, listening, and also write from dictation. And let's have a look at my scores. Surprisingly, I got 80 in my writing, even skipping two essays. So what does it tell us? Obviously, I'm not trying to advise you that you should also skip the essay part or that uh, essay is not necessary at all. What I wanted to convey is that instead of focusing too much on your essay, you should also pay more attention to how you do your reading, fill in the blanks, how you do your listening tasks that are related to writing because those are the ones that will give you more writing scores. I've been receiving many emails asking me for essay templates or like how to write a good essay. You need to ask yourself a question, is essay really your problem or something else? But now we're going to witness how I completed those tasks and achieved 80 in writing.
Well, who makes these decisions? In the international arena, the decisions are made by states. But to borrow George Orwell's phrase, uh, some states are more equal than others. Uh, the ones who are most equal uh, are the ones called G7, the seven rich industrial countries. So they have an overwhelming effect on state decisions. And of G7, the one that's far and away the most equal is, of course, the United States, which since the Second World War has had a position of overwhelming international power and no historical precedent to that, and of course has used it to design a world in the interests of powerful sectors within. Alongside the powerful states, there are the institutions that they've designed, the international financial institutions, the IMF and the World Bank, the World Trade Organization, took over from GATT a couple of years ago. Those are institutions of global dominance, global control, which are themselves controlled by the rich countries and primarily by the United States, which once again has an overwhelming influence.
I think we are in the early stages of a change toward much more human freedom in business. And I think this change may be as important for businesses as the change to democracy has been for governments. The reason I think that's happening is because it's now possible for the first time in human history to have the economic benefits of very large organizations, things like economies of scale and knowledge, and at the same time to have the human benefits of small organizations, things like freedom, flexibility, creativity, and motivation. The reason I think that's possible is because information technology has now reduced the cost of communication to such a low level that it's now possible for huge numbers of people, even in very large organizations, to have enough information to make sensible decisions for themselves instead of just following orders from someone above them who supposedly knows more than they do in a management hierarchy.
So between 4,000 and 3,000 BC, the Mesopotamian Sumerian cultures do not practice any kind of burial. And then about 3,000 in the early dynastic period, these burials start to reappear. And they reappear with a certain amount of conspicuous consumption. And this is the context for the, the royal burials at war. OK, so the royal cemetery um, consists of quite a number of pits. So these are little people. Um, these are the uh, excavation workers who are coming down into the pits. So you get some sense of how really deep and how really difficult it was to construct these chambers. So, what is quantum mechanics? Even though it was discovered by physicists, it's not a physical theory in the same sense as electromagnetism or general relativity. In the usual hierarchy of sciences, with biology at the top, then chemistry, then physics, then maths, quantum mechanics sits at a level between maths and physics that I don't know a good name for. Basically, Quantum mechanics is the operating system that other physical theories run on as application software, with the exception of general relativity, which hasn't yet been successfully ported to this particular OS. The bank is hoping to tap into a fast-growing market. The bad weather conditions led to several cancellations. The main problem is the increase in plagiarism exacerbated by the internet.
Uh, you can also attempt uh, mock test A using my answers in this video uh, and skip two essays to see if you can get similar scores like 79 plus. I wasn't showing much of the tips and tricks uh, for the other tasks in this video but if you wanted to find out more you can also join my online classes or otherwise we also have classes in Sydney and Hobart. For more information you can contact us on Facebook or otherwise you can send me emails to money at btemagic.com.au Thank you guys for watching and until next time. Bye bye!